Hello, I'm Full Paragon, and this is your guide to the Trial of the Ancients plus six weapons. So this latest update added an additional trial for Trials of the Ancients, and along with the usual boost to stats, it provides a new upgrade slab which will allow you to upgrade personal weapons to plus six. For the most part, the weapons are going to be basically the same as they used to be, although a few have been dramatically improved, and I'll go over those. Of course, this will be extremely expensive to max, this is the most expensive trial yet, but don't worry, Dust is still bad, so you don't have to worry in investing in him. And in some cases, the Goddess weapon will still be better for this adventure, and I'll go over those cases as well. The rather hefty cost for Shrine 12 is 600 Ancient Coins, 20 of the 4 Star Goblets, 55 of the Trial of the Ancient Material, 18 gems and 6 cat tablets. That brings your total cost for maxing it out to be 3,360 ancient coins, 100 chalices, 341 of the max trial material, 117 gems, and a whopping 36 cat tablets and a total of over 7 million eras. Obviously, you're gonna have to be selective about who you max out. As usual, I'll go over the characters one by one, starting with our boy Cosmo. He gets 50 hit points and 20 physical attack, which is a pretty nice boost to his stats. As far as the weapon itself, it gains 18 physical attack and 2% increased ultimate gauge charge. This is exactly what Kazuma wanted. Him firing off a bunch of snipes is one of the best things he can do, as that agility reduction on the boss is what makes Kazuma such a great adventurer. He's also used in basically every single arena because you need the weakness debuff, and Idle Kazuma is by far the best way to apply a weakness debuff if you don't use an on-element weakness debuffer. So I recommend that this is the first weapon that you max out for Kazuma. It has some of the best benefit, and Kazuma is pervasive throughout the meta, so this should be your top priority. Next up is Aqua, who gets 20 physical attack and additional dexterity. That additional dexterity is kind of wasted, it's basically a slight increase to how accurate she is, and she's not exactly the adventurer who's famous for missing. Her weapon gives her 12 more physical attack, 11 more magic attack, and a 3% physical damage bonus on top of the 8% light damage bonus that was already on the weapon. This is pretty good, and I would say it's medium priority. It's not quite as good as Kazuma, and the fact that Godqua doesn't really want to use her personal weapon sort of lowers this in the priority list. Godqua still likes the stats, but it's Don Machi Aqua who really wants this weapon, as it's by far the best on her. Then we have the Megumin herself, who gets 10 physical defense and 10 magic defense, which is a sort of a wash as far as stats go. Her weapon gets only a minor boost at 15 magic attack and 1% more ultimate damage. However, Despite the minor increase, I still think this is a high priority. Megamin is used basically in every single arena, and her explosion and railgun multipliers mean that even a small increase can add to your score by quite a bit. I think she's worth trialing early, because you're going to use this weapon on her and it's going to do great. Then we have Darkness. She gets 100 HP and 10 physical attack as far as stats go. And from her weapon, she's going to get 14 additional physical attack and 5 more physical defense, along with 3% resistance to both physical and magic damage. However, you won't be using her weapon pretty much ever, except in Dungeon and EX Arena, and it's just not worth it to spend that many resources on such a niche weapon. I would pass on it. And then there's Chris the Thief, who's trying to steal a place in the meta. She gets 50 hit points and 10 physical attack, while her weapon grants her 14 physical attack, and a very nice additional 1 agility. She also gets 1% more physical attack, unless the target is debuffed, in which case she gets 2% more. This is good, but it's not a super high priority. Chris does see some usage, mostly in Earth and possibly Lightning. You can wait a little bit on this weapon. When Festival Chris comes around, you'll definitely want to unlock it, but I wouldn't think this is the first thing you want to do. Our eternally impoverished Sopkeeper Wiz gets 100 hit points, and 10 physical defense, which is still pretty good because of the amount of HP and tankiness it gives her. From the weapon, she will get 13 more magic attack, but only 1% more magic attack overall, and her weapon won't be any better at soaking damage. 
This is still an excellent weapon, but Thumbs Up seems to have figured out that Wiz got the best personal weapon by a pretty wide margin, so the increase here is so small that I don't think it's a high priority to max out her weapon, especially since Wiz has been falling out of the meta. The foremost friend of the Crimson Demon Clan gets 10 physical defense and 10 magic defense, while Union's weapon gives her 14 magic attack and 1% additional magic damage. The problem here is that you only ever use Union's personal weapon in Light Arena, and these days she's really fallen off hard when it comes to that specific situation. So this is a really low priority. At some point, you probably will pick this up, as Festival Union will be absolutely gross, but she's quite a ways off, so I think you can wait on this for some time. The most overpowered character in Konosuba doesn't get the most overpowered weapon. Iris only gets 50 hit points and 10 physical attack, while her weapon increases by 14 physical attack, 1 physical defense, and 3% physical attack. This is a pretty steep upgrade for her. That 3% additional physical attack is very nice for Iris, and she also gets another 1% ultimate damage. This is good, but Iris is kind of a low priority. You can use Chunchumura on her, and most of the time she's just an R5 unit, so that increase just won't matter that much over the course of an arena. Again, eventually you'll want to do it, but don't do it straight away. As for our crazy cultist, Cecily gets 50 hit points and 10 physical defense, while her weapon picks up 11 physical attack and 12 magic attack, meaning it's still very confused. She also gets 2% more magic damage and 1% more water damage. It's still worthless, and it's still not worth trialing Cecilia. If you did, why? Our cutest little sister and future Devil Queen gets 10 physical defense and 10 magic defense, which is a pretty wash as far as a stat increase go. She gets 14 magic attack and some magic defense on her weapon, as well as 1% more magic damage and a baffling 3% more normal damage. I still don't know what the designers were smoking when they made that weapon, but it's still incredibly bad, and there's still very little reason to trial Komeko. As far as my personal spirit animal goes, Aru gets 70 hit points and 10 physical defense, which is eh. Her weapon gets 14 more magic attack, 1 more magic defense, and 1% more magic damage. This is a really minor stat increase for a weapon that you only really use on Dark Aru, so this is an extremely low priority weapon. At some point it might be worth doing, but it certainly isn't right now. Standard Isekai protagonist Kun808 gets 100 hit points and 10 physical attack, which is very good. As far as the weapon goes, he gets 14 physical attack, 3 more physical defense, and 1% more physical attack, and when he attacks, he will get 20 HP every time and additionally, so it'll be a total of 170. This is a very good weapon, and it's of medium priority. I still think that Manakati's weapon is awesome. You'll prefer Chunchumuru on him, but when you're using that on someone else, this is a great weapon for him to hold, so I'd get this at some point. <laughs> no! Our resident raccoon lady gets 70 hit points and 10 physical defense, which is eh, alright. She also gets an additional 13 magic attack and no magic damage or wind damage increase on that weapon. With Rin kicked out of wind by eyes, uh, there's not really any reason to trial her. I'm sure at some point it might be worth it, but I don't know when that will be. You can put this on the back burner for quite some time. Our other isekai, whose personality isn't a copy-paste from Sword Out Online, gets 10 physical attack and 20 magic defense, which is pretty good. She also picks up on her weapon an additional 13 physical attack, and Leah gets 4% increase to her physical damage and a 2% increase to the magic defense. This is amazing and is a really high priority. Along with the Goddess Spear, this is a great weapon on Leah. Which one is better is a little bit of a toss-up, though it's probably the Goddess weapon. Still, you can only have one of those, and it's a pretty big investment, so I recommend getting this for Leah if you use her at all, as this is a great weapon for her. The Resident Androphobe gets a 50 bonus to her hit points and 10 physical defense. Celo's weapon gets 13 additional magic attack and 1% more magic damage along with 2% increase to her physical defense. This is pretty bad and it really always has been. Healers like Celo would rather use an elemental scepter and there's no reason to trial her. As for our current most annoying member of Axel Hearts, who will soon give up her throne, 
Erica gets 50 hit points and 10 physical attack, which isn't all that bad. She also gets 14 physical attack on her weapon, an additional agility, and 1% physical attack when she doesn't meet the HP conditional, but if she does, she gets 3% more. This is pretty good, and after the upgrade, this is easily Erica's best weapon. If you're using Swimsuit Erica, you're definitely going to want to get this, however, it's not a top-of-the-line priority. There are some other weapons like Cosmos that you should definitely get first. As for Melissa, her weapon has been bad, and it continues to be bad. She gets 50 hit points and 10 physical attack, which wouldn't be that bad if that steaming heap of garbage didn't have a conditional where the target has to have a status ailment. That's really all you need to know. The other stats don't matter because you shouldn't get this weapon. It's hot garbage. As for our Hungry Hungry Beast Girl, she gets 100 hit points and 10 physical attack, which is pretty great. Her weapon comes with 13 more physical attack, 3 more physical defense, and another 4% increase to her physical damage and 2% to physical defense to contrast Leah's magic defense. This is an excellent weapon for Mia, and it's a very high priority. This trial weapon is by far her best option in most cases, although the goddess weapon is also pretty good. I recommend getting this ASAP after you get Cosmos. As for Amy, as with most healers, she would just rather use an elemental scepter. The stats are really baffling. She gets 50 hit points and one luck. I don't know what good that is going to do her. The increase on the stats really don't matter. This weapon is pretty bad, and I honestly do not recommend trialing Amy in this situation or any other. So quickly, I'll talk about the collab characters. They don't get a weapon, so they're pretty low priority. The only collab character I would currently consider trialing is Eyes. She's not really that worth it though, as she doesn't really get much on that last trial, and it's super expensive. You'll also want to hoard some resources, because we should be getting a new character in the form of Mel the Lightning Sprite fairly soon. That results in the tier list that you see here. I really recommend that you get Cosmo's weapon maxed out first. Other good characters to do are Megamine, Leah, and Mia. Keep in mind though, this is contingent on you having the cards to use. If you're not going to be using Leah in any arena, well, it's not really worth it to plus six her weapon, as good as it might be. So if you find yourself using someone like Chris or Mitsubishi more than a higher tier character, don't feel bad about trialing them first. You're going to get more out of your resources, which is what's really important. That's the video. Thanks for watching. I'll be coming out with more guides soon, and of course, a 2,000 subscriber special, so thanks to everyone who helped me get there.